Hey guys, welcome back to episode 45 of Five Drinks Through Midnight, the show where we bring the questions, guests bring the drinks, so we try to wrap up before midnight. Today we're talking to Maggie Hogan Banks from Arizona Distilling Company. But before we do, like, subscribe, do all the things so you can stay up to date. Let's get started. or midnight five drinks five questions midnight whatever comes first thank you so much for joining us looking forward to trying these amazing things with you welcome to the show how are you doing thank you i'm doing so good thank you for having me i'm excited to have you try our products and walk you through them good so what are we drinking first we are oh first up is our mission vodka how about that and it is a hundred percent corn Distilled seven times. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, so a little thing about our products is that we like to hide a little bit of Arizona history into all of our products. And um, just by each bottle, it represents something within the Arizona history. So for our Mission Vodka, we actually have the Mission San Javier del Bac. And it's Mission down by Tucson, right outside of Tucson. It's about 10 miles um, south of downtown Tucson, just to give you a little idea. And it was built in the 1700s. It's the oldest Spanish colonial structure in Arizona. Um, it's still uh, open. They've kept it up. They have they have old relics from past popes. It's really, really, really cool. Like, you think Arizona. I don't think vodka. Like, what made you guys make vodka? No. So, uh, as you know, um, when you started a distillery, it's kind of hard to focus on whiskey right out the gate. So um, our master dis distiller decided to do a vodka and gin as well. Okay, excellent. Oh so, yeah. Well, cheers to you. Cheers to you. I'm excited. It's clean, crisp, and it has a little bit of sweetness to it. Wow, okay. That, that it's, does... It's so smooth. It yeah. is so beyond smooth. So um, we all have one of those stories where you got sick off of a spirit, you know, and you could never return to it. And vodka was my spirit that I got in, insanely sick on. And I was never able to palate it um, until our vodka. And I'm not just saying that. It's, it's something that introduced me into the spirit of danger, I guess. Like, it's, to me, like... Vodka has always just been a hard no, whereas this is an easy sipper and it just throw a rock in there or something and sip on it on a hot day. I agree. Like this is, I was expecting burn and like just vodka. Like when you say vodka, like I, I, I expect this thing. This is not yeah. any of that. Like this no. is, a, you're right. This is a fucking good sipper. It's just like, this is something that you would, lemonade and a, a tall glass in a like an Arizona night like this is something really yeah, fucking good it's that's why I chose the cocktails that I chose because I wanted something simple that would really highlight the the spirit itself and so I don't you don't want to cover this up too much <laughs> is, do you think maybe because it's more corn based than anything do, is that like the route that maybe why it's so or i mean it could be just that seven that, times filled but also i mean yeah we're, we're both whiskey people so like i mean the point of like i believe it's the distillation process as as well as the grain that is used that's why it has that sweetness to it is that that, that full corn mouth that you get on it um, but we also, so we, we don't use a calm still. We actually use a pot still to do our vodka, okay. which is to me is 
you there's always that argument of a column still being better to distill vodka than a pot still just because you have those multiple distillations you know whereas the pot still you just get that one and then it's one and done one and done and one and done um but i don't i think this vodka our vodka showcases that it doesn't matter that it, it's a pot still or a column still that it's just a drinkable spill spirit that you can jo enjoy by itself well again it, it is we're off to a great start because it has <laughs> already just totally blown my mind on it's not a vodka it you call it vodka but it's not <laughs> like it, it can't be a vodka it's so smooth but like this is just yeah. Well, it was it was so surprising to me when I found out that you're doing a vodka and gin um, show or like you wanted to go that route instead of whiskey. And because you don't drink vodka or gin by itself, like it's almost unheard of. And um, it is, I was a little worried. I wasn't a little worried about our vodka, but it's a it's a little worrisome when you're introducing a vodka to someone because it is almost a hard no for a lot of people. Right. Well, so I, but but just hearing you being so ecstatic about it is just it it just it makes me love what I do even more, and it makes me even more proud of what I do. You, you should be, because, I mean, again, I am not a vodka person, but that's why I wanted to reach out to you, because, again, you, you're you slinging a spirit that I know very little about, and honestly, I love this. This is just so good. Like, this is, this is, it, it is not what I, I, I thought of vodka, so. <laughs> it's uh, not your nail polish, polish remover that you're expecting, that hard exactly. to like, burn and... I would Where punch anybody in the good. face that would want to put Red Bull in this. Like, what the? Why would you want to ruin it? Like, that is just like you have such a, yeah. It, and it's it's you have that a little bit of a burn on the nose when you um nose it, but you get mostly the sweetness from the corn. It, it's yeah. not overpowering at all. Yeah. No, not at all. All right. Well, I guess. That gets us into question one, which is a, a little bit of an origin story, but how'd you get into the spirits business? Oh man, it's been five, going on five years now. It'll be five years next week, actually. Happy <laughs> anniversary off, to you, so. Thank you, yeah, cheers to that. Uh, so yeah, I started off as a blogger on Instagram. Um, I, I, op I initially opened my Instagram account just to learn more about whiskey. And I then found the rabbit hole of the whiskey community. And they absolutely just sucked me in and taught me so much. And it gave me so many opportunities within these five years. Uh, so in, it was, 2018, I got to shadow um, a distillery down in Tucson called Hamilton Distillers, and uh, they do a single malt, and it's called uh, the Del Bach. And so I got to shadow them and learn how, or shadow the, their distillers for a day. And I, so I got to learn the whiskey making process, and I absolutely fell in love with it. I worked up, so it's in Tucson. And I, from Phoenix, it's about two yeah, two hours. So I drove the two hours, worked a full manual labor day, drove home the two hours, still was so stoked, was not exhausted at all. I was like, this is the stuff. How do I actually make the jump into the business? And so less than a year um, later, so that was in the beginning of the year. And then um, at the end of the year, um, I actually was talking to our master distiller, Jason, and I really just wanted to pick his brain on how to actually make the jump into the industry because I was just a blogger. I had a, a my full-time um, job. I was an office manager for a security company for about seven years. So it's quite the change of professions for sure of careers. Uh, so I set up a meeting with him, and by the end of the meeting, he offered me a job, and I was like, yes, 
and so I started doing their tours. I do um, their production. I learn. I'm learning a little bit of the cocktails, just being around it so much and stuff like that. Learning our new menus, and so just really diving into the whole industry for what it is between cocktails, spirits, people, just the whole enchilada, and it's been it's been so much fun. That's awesome. I well, I mean, I I think that's a great origin story because one it's also it, i'm very jealous because that's what i i, I want to be like i just want to be like <laughs> hey I, I i i have my instagram and i want to be like i i do i want to go work for a whiskey company like i think like distilling whatever kind of thing is just uh so then i guess a follow-up question off of that what's your end goal like do you want to be master distiller someplace or like i'm what, what do you want to be when you grow up? And I know that's such a weird question. But <laughs> like, again, I, I'm not grown up either. So like, I, people ask me that you all know, the time. So. It's just one of those things that we have to do, you know, yeah. and if we can enjoy what we do while we do it, you know, then more power to us. But my, and I, when I first started, this um, was master distiller. I wanted to apprentice and get um, some, knowledge under my belt and then um, venture off to another company or build my own. But uh, working with um, Arizona Distilling Company, I don't see myself leaving anytime soon. And Jason's not gonna give up that master um, distiller title. So, and I honestly, I don't wanna fight him on it because he is, I call him the Wizard of Oz. He's the guy behind the curtain. He's the master genius that has all these ideas. And I'm just in so in awe of him. And I have so much to learn from him. And not and it's just um not just about the whiskey side, but it's just his knowledge of Arizona, like his history. He's a fourth generation Arizonan. And our whole um, company is built on Arizona history. It's basically, every bo- like I said in the beginning, um, it ha- each bottle has its story, and I'll get into that a little bit more when we dive into the gin as well, because that has, the commerce gin has so much Arizona history into it. But my end game is still undetermined. <laughs> um, but Master Distiller sounds absolutely amazing and I hope one day I can get there um but not sure if that's truly my end game if I can help this amazing company um grow and just prosper and create something so it's just a matter of where this journey takes me as of right now I don't have any plans of leaving Arizona Distilling Company (laughs) Excellent. I mean, nor should you. I mean, so far we're off to a banger start and it's fucking amazing. So, I mean, I don't, I don't know why you'd want to leave, but yeah, I mean, so yeah. question, question one is down super easy. Like on to question two, drink two, what are we drinking? So this is our com- commerce gin. So I am super, super very proud of this gin. Um, so I'll just go into the little bit of history of behind this bottle. So our, um, growing up in Arizona, we learned five C's of Arizona and it's what our economy was built on. And so it's copper, cotton, uh, citrus, climate, and cattle. And so he pays homage to those five C's with the five C's of botanicals in his gin. So we have cardamom, coriander, cumin, cinnamon, citrus, which is a lime zest, lavender, apples, and then of course that juniper berry in there. So it's going to be a new world gin. Not going to have that heavy juniper influence that a dry gin would have. So it's going to be a little more balanced with all the other flavors. And um, the cool thing about this bottle is that we have the five seeds of Arizona on our label. So we have the citrus, the cotton, the climate, the cattle, and the copper star, just for to bring it back home. All right. The attention to detail on his bottles is perfect. So I'm not a big gin guy. Like, I was just yeah. gonna ask, are you a gin fan? I am not. So, like, do we? 
do we nose it? Do we like? Am I supposed to like like pick up like? So like, uh, we... yeah, you can nose it. You're going right. to get different botanicals. Yeah, some people are going to get a heavy lime. For me, it's a heavy lime and a heavy juniper nose. Okay. And a lavender, and then you can sip it. It just sip it how you would a whiskey. All right. Oh, definitely gets a lot of. Okay. Well, that over ice, that's a cocktail. So, okay. I'm, <laughs> I'm done with that. See, yeah. Whenever oh. someone, when I'm doing tours and someone tells me they don't like gin, I'm like, hold up. Yeah. One second. Let me just pour you this. And then, yeah, more than often than not, they'll enjoy the gin. It's been really interesting during the tours. Um, so since COVID, I noticed, so I've been doing tours minus COVID uh, about a year and a half now. And I've noticed since COVID <clears throat> that the whiskey drinkers are leaning towards our uh, gin and buying our gin rather than our bourbon. And it's just been a really interesting little thing that I've noticed um, during tours. I just want to throw that out there. It's just... Why do you, why do you think that is? I don't know. It's the, it, usually what they say to me, they're like, this is just so good. It has, it has so much flavor that you can, it's not just one note like a dry gin would be. It's not just that heavy juniper pine influence that you have. Whereas you can pick out certain <clears throat> flavors in this and it's, it's with this gin, it's a little more, lack of better words, forgiving on the palate. Okay. Um, and it's not, it's still gonna be a, a little overwhelming, but not just, taking you out and just you're just tapping out at that June for no you know you're just like no this is I'm not going to drink toothpaste sorry yeah no no it, well that like again for me like a gin like you you immediately get that juniper and like I don't get that off the bat like it, it's very citrus forward so like mm -hmm. I'm getting like again maybe that's why like I, I'm really much into this where it's like this is just a cocktail in a glass because I can get a lot of citrus and then maybe the juniper comes in a little bit later, but this is really good. Like I'm, yeah. I'm down for this. This is. Yeah. I love drinking this. Just put a little cube in it and yeah. I'm good to go on a hot day. Absolutely. Like this is, I think this, yeah. Like this is again, I mean, I, yeah, a cocktail in a glass. So <laughs> Wow. All right. So then I have a question too. Uh, what is the best and worst advice you've gotten so far for starting out in, in the in the spirits world? Uh, so when I was first beginning, um, I'm going to go back to Hamilton Distillers because they've been such a big stepping stone in my learning through all these years. They've become really good friends. And um, when I first met the owner, Stephen Paul, one of the things that he asked me was, are you willing to admit when you don't know something? And I, and that always struck a chord with me because I'm like, are you willing to be that humble and take on a learning ex experience? And with that, of course, I'm not going, not going to pretend that I know something. And the more knowledge that you have, the more power you have, the more stories you have, the more influence of life you have. And so that's just something that really, really stuck out to, to me. They, well, and again, you, like the, the route that you're going is the way that I always thought someone had to like go and be a distiller. Cause like I, I've interviewed a few master distillers and again, like if, they would have came, like if I went back in the future and just said, younger Tim, be really good at science and like you could become a distiller and make whiskey, I would love that. But like, I always thought like the point was you had to apprentice under somebody and be that, and that that's what you're, that's what you're doing. <laughs> and I absolutely love that like that. Cause like, that's that, I, I think that's the way that heritage is like passed out. So like, like you said, uh, 
the your master distiller isn't going anywhere but you know there's also head distiller and regular distiller so like you can still take those titles so but uh, exactly um you know it, it it just is one of those things where you, you can you're learning the process across the board and i, I mean i am very fucking jealous so like that yeah, is uh, it's it's been such a blessing you know i it to, to the other day on Saturday when I was talking to my boss and we're talking about growth within our company, we're expecting a little, uh, I shouldn't say a little growth spurt, but we're going to go through a growth spurt. So we're um, lining our ducks up in a row, just making sure that we have all the bases covered. And um, it was, I, it was, I struggled a lot during 2020 because um, I'm such a goal getter and 2020 nothing got done for anybody and so it for me it felt like I got pushed back on my you know um goals a little bit um but heading into all of this um we're now coming up on the other side and it's so exciting to me again and so refreshing and I'm getting that um fire under my ass again because things are happening um, but it, I said to him the other day, I was like, you know what, why I'm so happy and that I, I'm excited for what I do is because I get to grow a company and I get to see the little growth spurts. I get to see the struggles. I get to help be part of those solutions and it's just see something come off the ground and that I 100 hold wholeheartedly believe in and it's just it's just given me so many opportunities again it's just it's not just with the distillery but just other um opportunities are um coming in for me I get to do a barrel pick with um smooth ambler so things like that I get to do and but um the distillery is where my heart lies though that's something it's so, so funny because um when i first went in industry i kind of put my um instagram on the back burner and i didn't and i didn't review as much and i was really just focusing on growing um <clears throat> that career of the distillery and so it's something it, i have to find that fine line of um the distillery and the influencer work because it does it, it all ties in together and it's just one huge community and it's and i realized the other day it's like i live breathe the spirits world and it's it's absolutely taken over my life and i wouldn't have it any other way i'm i it's just the best all right question three drink three what are we drinking we are drinking a gimlet with our commerce gin. Excellent. A little bit of lime, a little bit of simple, a little bit of gin. Oh, amazing. Okay, so why a gimlet? They're so refreshing. Okay. <laughs> that was, that's basically my whole gimmick right now. It's just like, can I enjoy it? Is it refreshing? Is it going to put a smile on my face? That's a gimlet. Simple, clean, and fun. How can you go wrong? Like, honestly, like, this is just... I love that our gin isn't over juniper. Yeah. Like, it's not... It doesn't have that wham-bam in your face. So when you're drinking a gimlet, you're not going to have that huge influence of juniper. Um, that you would a different gin. Yeah, no, and again with the citrus, so that like that citrus like part, putting that into a gimlet, mm -hmm. it just makes it so much more extra citrusy, which is just amazing. So yeah, this mm -hmm. is freaking so it cool. That so. little plant, yeah, yeah, it's so, yeah good. it's so good. It's dangerously good. <laughs> it is. All right, well then on to question three. I hope this works out, but on to question three. How did your obsession with serial killers come about? Oh my gosh. It's been early 20s, I think. Or, yeah. No, it's probably late teens, 
going into early um, 20s is probably around when I really, really got interested in them. It's just true crime in general, mysteries, um, but more of how a brain ticks <laughs> is what interests me. Um, it's just, that's just something uh, like, that is a big thing about my life in general is that I want to know how a person ticks or what makes a person tick. And so with serial killers, you have that huge, like, I don't even have words for how gross it is. There's no words for the crimes that are committed. It's just so gruesome and just horrific and unimaginable in every way. And uh, there's so much that goes into it being a person themselves. And that goes back to the question, is it nature or nurture? And um, it really depends on the case, I would assume. Um, but that's really what got me into it, is just knowing something out there that is so grotesque and just so mischievous and just evil you know just plain evil out, out there that would I want to understand <laughs> of how you can get this like I, I've been on a huge serial killer kick and you can shut me up whenever no. <laughs> because you you open the rabbit hole you open the rabbit hole no no I'm, I'm very curious because you used to have a radio show and then like so I'm very curious like again social stalking like we found out the best stuff so like Again, yeah. so, and again, I, I'm from Wisconsin, which is like the home of the serial killers. So I, I'm down. So like, let's go. Like, and again, I got a gimlet here. So there's nothing better for a Friday than sitting here and drinking a gimlet and talking about serial killers. So, <laughs> right, right. No, I've been the so I I subscribe to Discovery Plus, right? Because um, there's a John Bonet. Um, documentary that they just released and I was like I have to watch this I just have to watch it and that's the only reason I subscribe and so then I followed down the rabbit hole because they have this tab that is just strictly true crime <laughs> and so then they have a whole thing of serial killers so I was just like I'm just gonna go down this whole rabbit hole and I watched literally probably everything on Discovery Plus that has to do with serial killers um but it it's just going back to um i can't think of the name his name now but there's this one um but he had a completely normal childhood and um even his father was like i have no idea why he did this um and it, it's one of the famous ones and his name is on the tip of my tongue and um it just goes down to he had this completely normal childhood and he decided that um was it Jeffrey Dahmer? I, I, it was sorry, Jeffrey that, Dahmer. I was gonna say like it sounds like Jeffrey Dahmer, but I, I, think, it, I think it's Jeffrey Dahmer. Yeah. Um yeah, no, I think it's Jeffrey Dahmer. And just the fact that he went down this road of such gruesome I don't even know I, I see I don't have words um for half of the shit that I watch <laughs> <laughs> um no so uh but yeah my serial killer show I did that for about a year um and I did when the I not all of them so not all of them affected me but the the ones with the kids that have really affected me um another one hit, uh, was albert fish and he um one of the grossest things that he did was stick needles up up his rectum they don't know why he did it <laughs> but i found um x-rays of it and I'm just like why is this here <laughs> why <laughs> so it's, I, guess I, don't have, I, I don't I don't have again I don't have words for half the shit that I watch yep. or read <laughs> so <laughs> four drink four what are we drinking 
are drinking a Moscow Mule. Excellent wine mule. So refreshing. I'm, I was expecting it to be like 100 today. So when I gave you all these, I was just like, if I'm going to day drink, I'm going to go as refreshing as possible. Excellent. And then, so that's where we are. All like, right. it, I think it's a, a, what it really comes down to is an easy day drinking day. Okay. It's nothing too hard for. Oh, I mean, I'm down. So, I mean, <laughs> like, that's... well, I have dinner plans, so oh. I can't get too trashed. <laughs> You're just going to be like, sorry, guys. I'm, I did five drinks. Sorry, at guys. I'm fucking yeah. hammered. So, yeah, no. Nope. I just did a series of five drinks in a little under an hour. So, I uh, fucking ripped. Yeah, so. you know. <laughs> This is the Maggie you get now. Let's roll. <laughs> uh, all right. So then on to question four. We got our Moscow Mule. What's the weirdest question you got on a tour? Oh, weirdest question. You have to be friends with a lot of people instantly. And like Dave from Scottsdale that has a dealership and he sells Hondas. Like you, you got to be his friend. And then there's Steve who does like drywall like you gotta be his friend like you're going you through be best friends yeah 160 people a day and like you gotta have like is there a question that like just everything is like people get scared doing tours and they kind of like shut down the really boisterous people are the ones that ask the like questions about how much we produce a year and just things like that. Those questions are really, really unnecessary. It was I like it, it's it's definitely a curious question. So like, what are you gonna to me? What are you gonna do with that information? Like, is that a right. necessary question that you need to ask? That you're going to be like, hey, so I went to this distillery tour. Yeah, they do this this great stuff. But did you know they do like fifteen hundred Oh, that's, that's real, right? right. Well, you, <laughs> so, are those people like spies for other distilleries? Are they like, oh, <laughs> like, are you like, are you working in the industry? Like, <laughs> that's what I don't get. That's so. It's those questions. So to me, like, so it's not like off the wall questions. It's just those questions to me are just so bizarre. Because it's again like, what are you going to do with that information after you go do that? Like, was that really necessary? And then everyone's just, okay, so we have to remember that too. <laughs> Is that, do we really have to remember that? Because I don't even remember what you said about the distillation process, but you know, we're just going to go on it and then we're going to go drink that afterwards and then yeah. we're just going to party. And after a while, like doing distillery tours, I really kind of get it. Like, it's really, it just comes down to, Everybody just wants to get drunk and have a party at the end. So, like that, that, that is the the, the end result, which is. It, it's true because it, you, I cannot tell you how many times that a a tour will just be quiet, you know, just like keep it to themselves, no questions, and then I sit down and I'm like, you guys ready to drink? So, yeah, let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like, okay, where did this come from? Where were you five minutes ago when I was just up here dancing by myself? Yeah. <laughs> All right, so on to question five. Our last question of the night comes down to a Whiskey Wednesday flip of the coin question. But before we go there, what are we drinking first? We are drinking a French 75. Excellent. I just wanted a little bubbles, especially to celebrate this occasion of us. Oh, I like that glass. Excellent. You know, it's a special occasion. So cheers. Cheers. I've been waiting for this drink. This is, I've been on a set, uh, French 75 kick lately at the distillery. That's been my go to quitting time drink. All right. So, out of question five, comes down to the flip of the coin question. It's a yes or no question. You flip the coin, with, the coin will tell you the answer. But really, it's just a nice way to end the night. 
So, it is. Pressure five. Is whiskey everything? <laughs> I get asked this so much. <laughs> It is and it isn't. But the final answer is this. All right, ready? Fuck no! Oh, no. <laughs> well, I mean, it, it, it could have worked either way. I mean, the fuck no! Again, you're you're slinging gin, you're slinging vodka, so whiskey isn't everything. But also, no. Whiskey is the water of life. It's where we started. So I agree. It I, is. We got on either way. And then I have our block, our copper city here Ooh. as well. I want everybody try, to try that as well. It's good. Oh, I will tell you, Maggie, it, it's been a true fucking pleasure to sit down and talk with you. I really it's been a respect blast. your time. I hope you have great dinner tonight. And two. Thank you. If I'm back in the Phoenix area, I'm going to look you up. Also, if you're ever in my great city of New York, I will love to show you around. Again, thank yes. you so much for your time. It's been a great thing. I love learning about your vodkas and gins. Uh, you got a vodka fan here now, which I really can't believe that I'm saying. <laughs> but like, I love it. I absolutely love it. So. That's what I'm here for. That's what I live for. Like, that's why I'm in this industry. Like, what I tell people is drink whatever you drink. Never say no to a drink, though. Yeah. Um, because you will be surprised at what you do and like do indeed like I like your dog's tail I see it. Yeah, you can see that. Yeah. <laughs> I have mine here too. <laughs> <laughs> working but what I say is drink whatever you drink um enjoy what you enjoy but always branch out even if you say you don't like something try it because more than likely you will be surprised at you the fact that you do enjoy it mm -hmm. then you can have that experience and if you don't like it then you can make note of it and be like hey I didn't like this so I can make note of it and use it for yep. future reference so there's no bad bad thing around it absolutely and again i mean i i think like again bar people are always willing to like if you just tell me don't like it they'll be willing to make you something else that you do like so uh Definitely. there's no reason to be a dick yeah. or anything along those lines but also at least try it we're not seven anymore exactly. we can't say that like yeah, you should always be able to try something. Always so. try it. Always try it, for sure. Well, again, Maggie, thank you so much. I really appreciate it, and cheers to you. Cheers to you, and thank you for having me. It's been a blast, and I'm so glad you enjoyed everything, so cheers. Thank you.